Implementing Skills TX has really boosted our digital skills management capability. At last, we have the data we need to support our workforce planning and help us make better informed decisions. We know what skills we have, including skills that we didn't know we had, so we can now give our people opportunities to use them. We've also defined the skills we need, and so we know our skill gaps and business risks. Okay, let's have a look at some analytics and see how we're doing. To start, let's dive into our employee experience dashboard. Overall, we still have a way to go to achieve excellence, but we've got great buy-in to the self-assessment. And it seems we got the communications right with a good rating for the assessment surveys. We can see a couple of areas for some focus. Let's start by assigning managers and team leaders and then ensure our people are updating their profiles and building their development action plans. See guys, already making good decisions. I selected the skills needed for our new machine learning project and can immediately see suitable resources. I'll leave David to pull the team together. If we look at our overall skill inventory compared to what's needed, we have some major undersupply. This will help us decide whether we build, buy or borrow skills. In addition to the big picture, we are also carrying some risks at an individual level. We have a few here that have less than 25% of the skills needed for their current job. That's got to be stressful. Sally, we'll leave you to investigate. And before we go outside for new positions, we can check for internal candidates. This will give existing staff better career opportunities and can avoid unnecessary recruitment. In summary, guys, we know where we are. We know where we are heading and we know how to get there. So let's go and make digital transformation work for us.